can just join in as let's give them a few more minutes okay it's just barely after 12 now right yeah yeah and uh i don't know i kind of stepped away did you talk about the chat box i did not i just asked people to mute their microphones okay so if everyone as courtney's presenting you keep yourselves muted if you look at the top right hand corner there's like a little message box if if something pops into your head that you have a question um or want to comment about just type it in there and um corey and i will be kind of monitoring that um and then when there comes an appropriate time to take questions we can do that okay and we'll read those questions from there that just keeps kind of the flow going better <clears throat> okay how about we get started and then if people miss the first part they can always watch the video um later to see what they miss and um probably worth saying again since we've had a few people join since erica went over this um the first thing is if you would um, mute your microphone, that way uh, Courtney's um, screen will be on your screen the whole time and that we're not interrupting her. And then you have a chat feature in the upper right hand corner. And if you um, press that chat feature, you can ask questions, um, comments, things like that. And Erica and I will monitor that and let Courtney know if we have um, questions for her. <laughs> So Courtney, whenever you are ready, um, maybe just introduce yourself in case people don't know who you are and what you teach, and then you're good to go. All right, perfect. Um, so I'm Courtney Elliott. I am the fourth grade teacher at Proctor Elementary School, and I'm going to be talking about using Flipgrid as a way to um, keep in contact with your students and build your classroom community over school closure. So I think if I hit present now, it will present my screen so you can see my flip grid. Does that work? Corey, can you see my flip grid? Um, no. Okay, then I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I think I hold on. I gotta click the button. What about now? Yep. yep. Perfect. All right. So if you go into the website for Flipgrid, what you have to do is you make an account for yourself. And then every time you make a grid, it will ask you how you want your students um, to be no known in your thing. So I do it by email address. So if you do it by email address and they don't need a code, they can just get in because they have <clears throat> the same email address at the end, like ours is at grcsu.org. So, for example, I've been using this for morning meeting. So, they're separated into bigger topics like grids. So, if I go and click on morning meeting grid, it will bring us up to a bunch of topics that we have. Um, and I just kind of started with a check-in over the weekend, just like for a place for kids to post videos and get practice with it. And then day one for morning meeting, we did um just like we were doing news ball in the classroom so we did what did you do this weekend and then they were able to go through and record 
videos about their weekend for their classmates. Um, if you can see here, this was mine. And then these are where students responded to me. So you can talk back and forth with kids via video. Um, and then kids can also respond to each other's. There is an option that you can moderate the videos. And if you moderate them, then you can choose when they are active or if they are hidden. So if there's a video you don't want the whole class to see, you can switch it from active to hidden if there's any reason for that. Um, and then today we did, so if I go back to morning meetings, today we did a morning meeting and it was just about telling jokes. So the kids went in and they recorded a video of themselves telling a joke for their classmates. And those are some of the responses we have so far. And then I have my other morning meeting set up for the rest of the week. So like day four or tomorrow we're doing a check-in on Google Classroom, but then day four we're going, coming back to Flipgrid and we're doing um, videos about like creating an imaginary animal. And then day five is going to be a book talk about the Read to Self book we've been reading at home during this week. So kind of talking about what it's about, summarizing it, would we recommend it to our classmates so far? Some things like, some things like that. Um, hold on one second. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Am I out of screen sharing now? Corey? Uh, you are, yes. Perfect. Okay. So that that's pretty much how I'm using it in my class or in my classroom right now. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Courtney? Hey, Courtney, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So I did a flip grid yesterday. It came off really smoothly. Then I and then I emailed you for some questions. But so today, what happened today was uh, when I shared the link, it only came up to my video. It didn't come up to the kids to respond. So nobody can respond now. And I went, I tried to go back in to try to find that button to make sure I could share, have the kids share, but I didn't mm -hmm. know I, I'm lost now. <laughs> um, hmm. Did you, you? Copy, you know what it says? Copy. It says copy. To, yeah. To so when I copied that, it was just my, my, my thing on my video. Like I said, hmm. I had my hair all crazy and stuff. Yeah. Um, I would just make then, I would just make a separate grid, like a separate. Um, do a new, a new one? I would redo it just a separate topic and not have any videos on it and share that link. And then everyone should be able to put their videos in there. Perfect. Okay. That helped me out a lot. Thank you. That was a yeah, simple no problem. Question. Thank you. So, Courtney, we have a question for you from Zach. Uh, he wants to know Is the video feature built into Flipgrid or do you need to use another extension to record? It's built into Flipgrid, so the kids can just like open their Chromebook and it automatically will record them once they've hit the record button on the app. Okay. Um, Alex wants to know, can you post the link to Google Classroom for a daily Flipgrid? Yeah. So you can, you could post the link to Google Classroom. What I've done is during closure, I have a menu for my kids. So it's like day one, what we're doing, day two, what we're doing, day three, what we're doing. And I just post the link there under morning meeting. So like where it says like morning meeting Flipgrid, that's their link to click on to get to the section where to record their video. But I've also posted it on Google Classroom before too. I think at this point too, you're welcome to unmute yourselves if you want to ask a question instead of typing.
Hi, Maureen, do you have a question? We noticed you unmuted yourself. Uh, no, you said to unmute, so I did. Oh, if, unmute if you have a question, I guess. Oh, okay, okay, got it, yeah. got it. Courtney, yeah. Cindy um, wants to know, she says, um, oh, hold on, I just have to scroll down. Um, so the, the videos that the students post, they're not interactive. No, they are. The kids can the kids can interact with each other. It's just not in real time. So like if I have if a student posts a video about um like a joke and then another student wants to respond to their joke, they can do that. It's just like not a real time conversation back and forth though. It's just like a response video. You can also turn that feature off though if you want to. So there are options of things you can turn on and off. So if you don't want them to be able to respond to each other, you can turn that option off. But if you do want them to be able to respond to each other, you can keep that option on. Yeah, you can you can proof the videos if you change the grids from to moderated. Um, so there's like a section like a. I don't know what to call it. There's like a setting for moderation. And if you put it on moderating, then you have to approve their videos before the other kids can see them. You can choose them to be active or hidden. I did that when we did our first one just because I had some kids that were posting like 20 times. So I just kind of went through and like gave kids a couple times to talk and then hid the rest of them. Hid the ones of the ones who had like 20 videos on there. Yeah, Amanda, I think that's good. Amanda wrote, in case you didn't see it, I think it's good that it's recorded way, it's a recorded way for them to respond to each other. I think for families, especially families with multiple children, it's harder to do face-to-face -face time like Google Meets at a certain time. Very true. This option provides the flexibility for families and students. That's right. So the difference between synchronous, meaning you meet all at the same time versus asynchronous, and it's very important to have um, a yeah. lot of options. It's good too for younger students who have like childcare things going on right now, or like kids who might be essential worker kids who are going into childcare. Some, they may not be able to do the same thing at the same time as everybody else. So it also gives them an outlet and a way to stay connected with the classroom community. If we can't all get on Google Hangouts at nine o'clock in the morning to do morning meeting every day. Yep. Sarah Marcus wrote, how much time do you typically spend each day viewing and or creating flip grid videos um so i made myself like a work from home remote schedule and from eight to nine that's what i do is i go on flipgrid i'll record my next day's flipgrid for the kids and then i'll spend that time in that hour watching the videos of the kids who have posted it and responding to them and you can either respond to them like you can do a video back to them or you there's a comment box i've been commenting a lot to kids like just writing them a short comment um and then so in that eight to nine time i usually work on it and then like Throughout the day, I'll check it again to see if any other kids have updated it and respond to them. So really not more than an hour. It's my favorite part of the day, though, because I get to see my kids. I have a question. Are all of your kids participating in this? Right now, um, it's available to everybody. I have three students who chose to do packet work because of limited technology. So I haven't had responses from them yet. Mm -hmm. But usually I get responses from a majority of my class, um, at least 10 out of the 20, which is nice, so at least 50%. And then I get, um, we also have other teachers who are doing them, like Miss Bennett's done some, Miss Pigeon did some, Miss um, Ryder, our literacy coach, has done some for them. So it's another way for like other teachers to come on and interact with them too, which is cool. Can they be teachers in your Flipgrid? Yeah, you can become a co-pilot with someone on Flipgrid, but re and really just what that means is they can create grids and they can create topics, but anyone with the link can re and the email and the same email address as you, like end of the email address as you, can go on and post videos. Cool. Um, something that I think it's worth mentioning is that 
there is a Flipgrid app. So mm -hmm. while some of our students may not have access to um, technology, chose not to bring Chromebooks home for a variety of reasons, many of our families do have phones. So it's something that parents could download onto a phone. And because Flipgrid videos are pretty short, um, perhaps with their parents, they could go on, especially for the younger kids and create videos that way. Mm -hmm. I'm also gonna try to like branch out and use it in different ways too. So like on Fridays, we're gonna try number talks with it. So like posing a question like 116 plus 129 and then having the kids come up with the sum and their strategy, just like we were doing a number of talk in the classroom. Um, and then if we do extend past these two weeks of closure, I want to use it as another way for kids to kind of have discussions around some of the content and new learning. So it's good right now just to use it as morning meeting to get them connected and used to the tool. But then I also am going to start using it in ways that they can have academic content through it and work on academic content through it. Um, so Stacy wants to know when beginning, uh, mm -hmm. should she share a join code or enter all the kids' email addresses? Um, so here, I'll pull it up on my phone. When I, when I made mine, all I did was make my educator account, which brought me to my educator dashboard. And then all you have to do is click that option that says like same email address or share with same email address. And then anyone with that email address can access it. It doesn't, with that school email address can access it. It doesn't have to be like that I invite them individually. So you're saying that at the, if it, as long as it has the at grcsu.org part in the email, they can join. Yeah, all your kids should be able to access it through that school email. Cool. So Courtney, Becky is asking for pre-K students who do not have a school email, is there an option to send an, e uh, an invite to parents email? Yeah, so you could send them the Flipgrid code and if they have the Flipgrid code, they should be able to get into it. I'm not sure 100% if that works, I haven't tried it, but I do know there are ways that it, there are other options besides just the email address. I can't remember them off the top of my head because that's the one that I use. But I think if you sent them the link, they should be able to get into it. I believe you're correct on that. I think if you choose a second option of choosing a code, mm -hmm. um, anyone that has the code can join regardless of email address. Mm -hmm. Um, Stacy wants to know, is there a limit on length of videos? So you can set your length and I think you can set it anywhere from like 10 seconds to like eight minutes. So, um, and like, I usually do a minute or a minute and 30 seconds just because they don't usually use that much airtime and it just gives them that amount of time to talk if they want to. Um, but you can, you can choose how long at the top of each grid or each topic, you can choose how long you want your response to be. So like today telling a joke, I might, I've only given them 30 seconds to a minute. And then if we're doing a book talk, I might give them two minutes or five minutes to do their book talk. Okay, um, we'll give like one more minute. If there are any last minute questions for Courtney, you can unmute your microphone to ask or just ask in the comments.
Courtney, Lisa is asking, um, have you ever had something not work well on Flipgrid? What are some lessons learned that you could share with us? Mm, that's a great question. Um, I actually, so last year, Corey loved Flipgrid and I really was not a fan of Flipgrid if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, and I think it was because I didn't know like how to like navigate my way around it. So then like when we went to closure and I was kind of looking for a way to do morning meeting, I remembered I had used it. So I kind of went back to it and I played around with it more and I kind of have a new appreciation for it. I think the thing that like put me off in the beginning is like, was trying to get all the kids on and like, how will they get their code and how will they know where to go? So just like linking it on the menu and having them know how to get into it has been really helpful. And so like making it clear to them what the directions are um, has really helped. And I've kind of have a new appreciation for the tool than I did before. Awesome. Um, another question from Stacy. Uh, she's wondering about for high school, should she create a grid for each class that she teaches or should she just create one course grid for all the classes? That's a great idea. Um, I You could do a different a grid for each class. That would probably be the best way to go. And then within the grid, each topic is something different you want them to respond to. That way you're not sitting there sorting through a whole bunch of topics. So like my grids are like, I have a morning meeting grid. I have a number talk grid. Um, when we start getting into other content, like I'll have a geometry grid or a myths and legends grid. So I kind of separate it by content area about what the videos on there are going to be about. So I think that's a good idea to do it like by class for high school. I, can I chime in a little bit? Uh, I do know some teachers who have felt it to be daunting uh, with Google Classroom to have all, like if they're teaching the same thing in two or three different sections, they have kind of changed and put everybody in one Google Classroom because we don't have time. We don't have, we don't, we don't have sections delineated by time anymore in our day. So that mm -hmm. could be an option. You just throw them all in the same grid right now, if you're going to post the same and then, and then um, kind of maybe by topic, because you're going to, instead of going to four different places or three different places for the same answers, you could go to one place. That's an option. Okay, um, so Courtney, if people have more questions about this later, can they reach out to you? Yeah, that's fine. You can email me. It's just Courtney.Elliot at grcsu.org or get in contact with one of the coaches and they can help you get in contact with me. That's perfectly fine. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing with us and thank you everyone that joined us today. Yeah, no problem. Thank you.